Yeah, sorted. All right, let's get going. Yeah, and I actually forgot to say earlier that uh, we must actually have some some photos of today, just to remember, because it's our first time here at the venue, so maybe, I don't know, Helen, Lisa, maybe some others, maybe you want to take a few photos while we're here today, and you can send them, send them to you on WhatsApp, we'd love to document this day, it's a new, it's a new chapter for the church, eh? and it's exciting, and um, there's really excitement in my own heart and spirit um, for this move, and um, a lot of expectation, and um, yeah, so, let's get into the message, so, you can go to our next slide. I'm going to explain to you in a moment. Just, just, just flow, go with me, okay? So um, I matriculated in, in 2002. And um, then I went to, to seminary. I went to go study at Bible College, did my, my BA in theology. And that was my, my class. So that's me in the back. You won't recognize me. I've got, long, I've got long blonde hair. I was a skater dude back in the day. You can go to our next slide. All right, there's me, too cool for school. So that's me in the middle. And the guy on the left there was my best friend, uh, Simon, and uh, JC on the right-hand side. And uh, JC actually went into missions. So when he finished Bible College, he went to Zambia, where he's been serving as a, as a missionary since that time. And he's part of uh, View Church in, in Tableview in Cape Town. And I believe he's on his, on his way back. He's now going to be doing something else. Let's go to our next one. So after I finished Bible College, I, I, I began with youth ministry, and I was a youth pastor for 10 years, and um, there's some pics from my youth ministry days, and um, I think on the left-hand side, when I was working at an Anglican church, and then in the middle there, that's um, Baines Clough, that's a campsite that we used to use often for our youth camps, and then on the right-hand side, there was a, a, a holiday club that we did on the, on the Vescus, we used to do it every year, we used to take a group of teenagers to the West Coast and do a club together. Let's go to our next one. All right, there's a lovely lady. So, um, and then after that, I got, I got married several years later. It was on the, the 3rd of August, uh, 2013. You can go to our next one. Who's that? And then our first child was born in 2017. All right, there's Mikamu. In 2018, we moved to Addo. Go to our next one there. And then we had our second child, all right, little, little Lexi, in uh, 2019. And then after that, we moved to Kirkwood a few, about, about two years later, maybe. Thanks, Mark. You can go to our first, our first point there, our next slide. So, um, yeah, our next one. All right, okay, there's Kirkwood, next one. There we go. All right, you can stay there for us. So, um, I'm mentioning these events to you because... Every one of these events brought me into a new season of, of life. And you know what? Life is made up of seasons, right? You with me? I mean, the Bible says that in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, it says, there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. And these seasons are always changing. In life, you're either entering a season or you're or you in a season or you're, you are coming out of a season. And these seasons, they change for, for different reasons. Sometimes they change naturally, right? We, we get a new job, or we get married, or we have, we have kids. We move, we retire. All of these are natural uh, 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 changes of seasons. Other times seasons change because we make a choice. We choose to, cha to change the season. Right, we decide to change career, or we, we've got some young people here, or we decide to, to go to another school, or we choose to, to relocate. Other times we sense God leading us into a new season. Have you had that experience before where you've had a sense that God is moving you into something new? Just want to see my raise of hands. Okay, you've, you've had that sense that God is taking you into a new space, a new season. And I've had that experience more than, more than once. And I want to show you just, uh, just a quick example. So before we moved to the Valley, um, I was a youth pastor, as you know. Uh, for, I was a youth pastor for 10 years. 
And before we moved, I was working at a vineyard church in Cape Town. And about two years before we, moved, we came to the valley, I had a sense in my spirit that my time as youth pastor was, was ending. And I wasn't sure that where, where God was going to take me and where God was going to take my family. I just knew on the inside of me that God was, was leading us into something new. And so what do we do when we are in that space? When we have a sense that seasons are changing, can we prepare for that season? Or do we just wait for events to unfold? And I would argue that we can prepare and that we should prepare for a new season. And the question is, how do we do that? How do we prepare? And what I want to do today in my time with you is I want to share some, some preparation tips with you to help you to, to prepare for um, your next season. So turn to your neighbor and say, I want to be prepared for my next season. Turn to your neighbor and say, I want to be prepared for my next season. There's nobody next to you, Helen. So preparation tip number one is get in tune with the Holy Spirit. You know, it can be a challenge to recognize when a season is changing. And that's why we need the help of the Holy Spirit to, to know when seasons are changing. I'm going to take you to a few scriptures today. One of those is um, in the book of Acts, verse, uh, chapter 19, verse 8 to 11. It says, Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly there for three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. But some of them became obstinate, they refused to believe and publicly maligned the way, and so Paul left them. He took the disciples with him and had discussions daily in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. This went on for two years, so that all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick. And the illnesses were cured, and evil spirits left them. That sounds like a good day of ministry, doesn't it? And so Paul had come to Ephesus, and he visited a local synagogue. That was his, his modus operandi. That's what Paul would usually, usually do uh, when he went to a new location to do ministry. And Paul spent three months teaching Jewish believers, and his ministry was successful. And then the season of Paul's life came to an end. And the question is, how did Paul know that it was time to move on? Well, through two ways, and I want to share those two with you very quickly. First, Paul was led through natural circumstances. Right? Paul hit a roadblock. There was no way to go forward. Sometimes it happens in life. Right? You just can't go ahead. And the, the Jews made life difficult for Paul. They opposed him. Right? And Paul's ministry became less and less effective. And so that's the first one. And let me just make a disclaimer quickly and say that God does and can use circumstances to guide us into new seasons. But circumstances are not always an indication of God's plan for our lives. And that's why we need to hear the Holy Spirit. And that leads me to the second point here, that that Paul sensed with the help of the Holy Spirit that it was time to move on, that that season of teaching had come to an end. And like Paul, every single one of us here today needs to be in tune with Holy Spirit so that we are aware of what God is doing in our lives. You with me? There's times where we can just go from season to season, from season to season, without really taking stock, without really acknowledging what God is doing in our lives. Amen. How many of you know that God always has a plan? He sees ahead. Come on, eh? And, um, you know, Paul, Paul left through the prompting of the Spirit. And he went to, to, to speak in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. And, you know, halls like these were used in the mornings for teaching philosophy. But halls like these are normally empty during the hottest part of the day, which was 11 o'clock to 4 o'clock. And Paul was able to, 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 uh, to preach the gospel 
in that hall every single day for two years during that time of the day. Of course, in those time, times, many people didn't work during those times because it was, it was hot. You know? Doesn't that sound good? It was hot from 11 o'clock to 4 o'clock. I wonder how much work they got done. And so people would come and listen to Paul during the, during the hot part of the day. And Paul did this for two years, like I said. And Paul was, his ministry was super successful. So much so that the gospel spread throughout the province of Asia. You with me? There's a few take-home lessons that I want to share with you quickly based on this text. God positioned Paul to reach more people. Why? Because that's God's heart. God is a missional God. Mission is, is his heartbeat. God wants to reach people. And so his ministry became effect, uh, uh, less effective. He hit a roadblock, and so God repositioned him so he could reach out and reach more people. There are times in our lives that we need to choose to break from where we are and move into the new place that God is calling us to so that we can be more effective, so that we can grow, so that, they, so that there can be increase in our lives. Our church has, of course, moved to Kirkwood, this being our first service here. And we've moved because we, we have sensed that God has told us to, to make the move. God has relocated us. He's repositioned us because he has a plan and a purpose for our church. Don't you want to turn to your neighbor and say, God has a plan for our church. I like participation. It keeps you awake. Something that I wanted to, to, to notice about the text is that, is that Paul or God had already planned a new venue for Paul to go to. And I want you to see the parallels between this text and what God has been doing in our church. Right? God wasn't taken by surprise. When that um, avenue came to an end, God had another plan in mind. And um, as you know, Paul was more effective in the, in the new place. And by the way, the, the, the lecture hall of Tyrannus was located in a central part of the city. Where has God positioned our church? In a central part of this town, where there's huge scope to reach people. And my prayer and my hope is that God will use this church to, to, to share the gospel with many people here in the Kirkwood area. That this would be a lighthouse where people will, will, will hear the message of Christ and come to know him. Amen. Does that sound good? And so let me make it personal. Are you sensing that your season is changing? And if that's you, I would encourage you to, to listen to Holy Spirit. He's the one that will, will guide you through transition. He's the one that will take you from where you are now to where you are meant to be as he has done with our church. And so preparation tip number one is what? It is be in tune or get in tune with the Holy Spirit. Number two is grow in that direction. Grow in that direction. If God has shown you that your season is changing, or if he gives you a glimpse of the future, it's time to start growing in that direction. And you know, Joshua is a classic example. Moses picked uh, Joshua to, to lead Israel into the promised land. Well, in fact, God picked him. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 3 verse 28, it says, Commission Joshua, this is God speaking to Moses. Commission Joshua and encourage and strengthen him, for he will lead this people across and will cause them to inherit the land that you will see. And what this means is that Joshua knew early on that he would succeed Moses. But that wasn't going to happen automatically. A few things had to happen first. Joshua had to, to grow in that direction. So when the time came for him to take over the reins from Moses, he was ready. Amen. And how did he do that? How did he grow in that direction? Well, firstly, he got some experience. That's always a good thing. The Bible says in Exodus 17 that, that Joshua led Israel into battle against the Amalekites. Right? So he had, he, had, um, he, had, he had experience. He got his hands dirty. Secondly, he got some training. 
He learned from Moses, an amazing leader. And by the way, you can never be a good leader unless you learn to be a good follower. (laughs) Because we will always be learning from others for the rest of our lives as people and as leaders. And so when you have a sense that, that God is leading you somewhere, when he gives you a glimpse of the future, begin to grow in that direction, wherever that might be. I want to give you a recent example to help you understand what I'm, what I'm saying. How many of you know Devin Hendricks? He's a local pastor. He leads a church in, in Kirkwood. He's a good, good friend of mine. And the Lord placed on his heart to, to, to reach young people in the Kirkwood area, to make an impact. And, and I, I've, been speaking, I've been having conversations with people, and it seems like God is laying this on people's hearts to, to, to reach young people in the Kirkwood area. Teenagers especially, or, or um, in particular. And so the first step that Devin took was to um, arrange a meeting with local pastors. So last week, um, a few of us, we met together at uh, Krunenhof. I always struggle with that word, Krunenhof. It's difficult to roll that R, eh? Krunenhof. Yamanaman. We got together and we discussed the matter. How can we reach young people? After, then we felt that we should... Go to St. Columkill, because, I mean, some of us are actually involved in this school already. We met with uh, the principal of St. Columkill, and we said, hey, how can we serve your school? After that, we organized a meeting with some of the youth from our churches, and we asked them, young people, how can we, how can we reach young people? Let's have a discussion. And so what Devin has done, he's starting to, to, to lean into the direction that God is taking him. What is the direction that God is taking you? Begin to lean into it. Take the first step. Begin to grow in that direction. Preparation tip number three, and I've I've got um, just three points today. Number three is allow God to prepare you. I want you to picture in your mind Moses standing in front of Pharaoh, demanding, let my people go. Or imagine Esther I had to bring a lady into there. Imagine Esther standing before the king, petitioning the king to save, to save her people. Or imagine David, the, the young shepherd boy, facing the warrior giant that no other soldier would dare to face. And every one of these, these, these great men and women of the Bible were prepared by God for these pivotal moments. And the point is this, that that God will always prepare you for a new season in whatever shape or form. Let's stick with Moses. Let's use him as a case study. God had a purpose in mind for Moses. Am I right? He had a purpose. He had a task for Moses. And he went through many, many years of training. And what is the purpose? It is to free Israel. It is to to free them, then to establish them as as a nation, and then to lead them across the vast wilderness towards the promised land. God also used them to to write the the early books of the Bible. And every single experience that Moses went through in his lifetime was preparation for God's purpose. It was preparation for what was to come. And I want to just share three things with you quickly before I come into land. Let's think about the life of Moses. How did God prepare Moses? Maybe while I'm speaking, you can maybe think back on your life, how God prepared you for certain moments in time. Well, firstly, Moses was raised not in an Israeli house. He was raised in the house of Egypt. The Bible says in Acts 7 verse 22, it says, Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was Powerful in speech and action. It's a skill that he had to learn. And he learned that in the house of Egypt. He learned crucial skills such as reading and writing. He learned leadership skills by observing the, the royal court in that house. And it's those skills that were essential for leading the nation. There's no way that Moses could have done it if he was a slave. He had to be raised in the house of Egypt. Are you with me? It's just, I don't know, for me it's amazing when you put all the pieces together and see how God worked in his life, 
how he prepared him. Because that's what God is in our lives. There's, there's many times we don't understand it all, but God knows. Amen. Let's move on. Second of all, you must not forget that Moses was, he had a, his mom was an Israelite. And Moses maintained his connection to the, to the nation of Israel through his biological mom. There's no way that Moses would have had a desire to, to deliver Israel if it were not for that connection with his mom. Let's move on. Thirdly, Moses fled um, Egypt and he started a family in the wilderness and he became a shepherd for his father-in-law for the next 40 years. His time as a, as a shepherd taught him how to survive in, in the wilderness. And we mustn't forget that, excuse me, that many of the Israelites would have never left Egypt before. You with me? So God sent Moses ahead to prepare him to take the Israelites through a vast wilderness. And so God dealt with Moses in a way that prepared him for what was to come. And if God is leading you into a new season, he will use similar methods. Go and study people like Joshua, Moses, Esther, David. God will use similar methods to prepare us because the Bible says in Malachi 3 verse 6 that God does not change. And so as I close, let me ask you, do you have a sense that your season is changing? And if so, your spiritual ears need to be open to listen to the Holy Spirit. He's the one who will guide you through change. And so action, action step number one in closing is this. You set aside time to listen to the voice of God. It could be for a few minutes a day. It could be or you might want to, to take some time out. You might want to go away for a day or a few days and take your Bible and your notepad and sit at the feet of Jesus and listen. I listened to Robert Morris preach this past week on YouTube and he was saying he's got a, a, a businessman in his church and he owns NASCAR Speedway. So I mean, that's a big, a big business, right? And he said that this guy, he goes away a few times a year just to sit and be quiet and to, and to listen for instructions from God. And he says it's in those times that God will, will, will lead him in his business. That God will tell him what to do. That God will give him strategy. And we must be careful. We, we're not, we don't get so busy that we're not listening. Because Holy Spirit wants to guide you in every aspect of your life. Amen. Secondly, I said earlier that you must start growing in that direction that God is leading you to. You know, let's make it practical. If you want to play piano, what do you do? Find a teacher. Hey? If you want to go on an overseas trip, but you don't have the money saved up, what do you do? Start saving. If you want to go forward with your career, what do you do? Maybe go for some additional training. So action step number two in closing is to start taking steps in that direction, whatever that might be. And lastly is say yes to the new season. And that's not always easy. Because when seasons are changing, there's often this mixed emotions, right? And there's times when we, where we don't want to move into the new because we're holding on to what we know. We're holding on to the familiar. And that's, that's, that's safe, it's comfortable. And other times we, we don't want to move forward because we, we're scared, we're fearful. Sometimes we don't want to move forward because we, we, we're not sure how we're going to, if we're going to steward the next season well. But I would encourage you to say yes, and not just with your head, but with your heart, to say, yes, God, I'm going to embrace what you have for me. Amen. You know, before we came to Valley, we had no idea what we were coming to. <laughs> the Valley is a very different place to, to Cape Town, where we used to live, then the suburbs. And there were many things that we weren't sure of. We were um, 
Yeah, we didn't have all the details on paper. But we felt God say, come. We felt him say, go to the valley. And we said yes to him. We said yes to God in faith, and we surrendered to him. And I want to encourage you that if God is showing you something of the future, say yes to him. Even if you don't have all the details, even if you're unsure, if you know it's of God, say yes in faith. Say yes, God. Amen. Hey? Because sometimes that's a process. Like I said, it's not always easy to let go of the past and to move into what God has for you. Say yes to God and your new season. I'm going to close with a quote and then we're going to wrap up. We do not enter a new season on our own accord, but it is God who calls us. It is our faith to Him that allows us to step into it and our willingness to surrender that enables us to experience it. All right. Let's, let's, let's close our eyes. So all eyes are closed, and I just want to ask you, um, there might be somebody who wants to respond to the message. And if you are saying, you know what, I've got a sense that God is taking me into a new place, that a new season is coming, don't you want to raise your hand if, if, if you want to? I just want to, want to pray, pray over you. I'm not going to call you out. Eyes will remain closed. I just want to pray, pray over you. There's one hand going up there. Thanks. You're saying, I'm, I'm just, I just have a sense that, that God has something new in store for me. He's taking me into a new place. There's another hand there. Thank you. My season is changing. It might not be, it, it, it might not be a, um, a geographical location or, or, or move. It might be something in your workplace. There could be any kind of change in your life where you're saying, God is saying, I'm taking you into the new. Right? It could be anything. Here we go. All right. Yeah, I'm going to pray for you guys. Lord, I thank you for those people that have responded, and I, I bring them before you now. And thank you that you're so faithful to us, Lord. Thank you that you, that you know what's coming up. You know what's ahead. Thank you, Lord, that you, you prepare the way that you go ahead of us, God. And so, Lord, I, I commit these people to you. And I pray, Lord, that they would have the, the boldness and courage to say yes to the new season, to say yes to what you have in store. And thank you, Lord, that they can, that they can trust you with their lives. Thank you that you are a good, faithful Father and that you always have our best in mind. And so may they trust you, may they surrender to you, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Miss Helen, would you mind closing for us in prayer? Would that be okay? Amen. Thanks, Helen. Please stick around. Hang, hang around a bit. Uh, say hello to somebody. Please grab.